we are back and I'm honored to stand next to the founder of the CDF organization. This is Bina Radharma Vadana. Would you like to tell me and tell the viewers about your vision and mission? Um, our vision is uh, both the vision and mission is to help many um, underprivileged people who are um, suffering with illnesses who need transportation for the treatment because if they don't get the transportation for their treatment um, they will not be able to live so basically we are saving lives I heard that you are in the non-emergency transport services for especially cancer and chronic kidney disease isn't it spot on so um, you have covered all remote and rural regions of Sri Lanka yeah, the, currently the operation is in southern Sri Lanka, northern Sri Lanka, in the vast north central region and also the western region uh, where the main cancer hospital. So we do help patients in Maharagama Cancer Hospital Palliative Ward as well as Children's Ward. Um, so w from there we pretty much take patients and who needs to come there, we bring from them from all over the country. You launched something new today. We were supposed to launch something new, uh, but uh, we couldn't complete all the tasks. So the launch didn't go ahead, but we are still working on it. So uh, we will have a soft launch. We don't have a major launch. Yes. Thank you so much, Brina. That's wonderful what you're doing. I love the fact that you have networked with so many s good people, the people with the same goals, uh, who would love to help people. And I love the fact that you bring awareness of the people that they should know about, the things that people go through. that. I don't think most of the people here who are born here especially knows what our people go through back at home. So I really appreciate what you do. It's a noble cause. It's amazing. And I wish you really well. And I hope your the funds you raise will increase day by day. One more thing. As the founder, what are the challenges in general that you have come across to putting this together and bringing this without a hiccup? As usual, it is funding is the biggest issue because we haven't had an event for 18 months. So that is why we went ahead with an event. So people can, we don't have to have an event, people can go through crowdfunding, they can do Facebook fundraisers uh, for their birthday or anniversary or whatever. So they can raise and everyone can contribute, chip in a little bit and it'll be a big amount and where we can successfully um, provide services, uninterrupted services to those, those who need. Thank you so much, Brenner. I, I would say, as a human being, just support anytime, anywhere. There's no particular time of the day if you want to support somebody. So you do fundraisers, you do your own fundraising events on social media platforms, use it for a cause, and help the way you can. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to welcome Melbourne's finest stand-up comedian. He's an actor, a writer, Dilruk is known for many TV series such as Cram, The Ascenders, No Appointment Necessary, and the most important, he received a Logie for the 2018 Graham Kennedy Award for Most Popular New Talent. The list goes on, ladies and gentlemen. Would you kindly put your hands together for Dilruk Jai Singer! Thank you very much, thank you. This might be the first time uh, in my career of 10 years in Australia that the MC got the pronunciation correctly. So that is nice, that feels very special and it's quite genuinely nice to be here. I, uh, I'm really glad I dressed up for the event by the way. I didn't realize how many suits and ties there were going to be here. I thought it was an afternoon, yeah I can wear a denim jacket. Turns out I should have known Lankans would dress up. But what I am also really appreciative of is uh, I'm quite, uh, it's quite a special event for many reasons, obviously for what, what we're raising money here and I think it's very special and, and, and commendable. But mainly I think the fact that uh, Binara told me that we'd be starting at 3.30 and we actually kicked off at 3.20 and a Sri Lankan event that starts early, I mean honestly, that alone deserves a round of applause, like the organization of that. I thought when we said 3.30 it's probably going to be about 4.40 by the time everyone shows up, but no, everyone's here on time. So genuinely, thank you so much for coming along and, and supporting this event. It is my honor to be here. It's been, I mean, given how tough Victoria went, uh, what we went through last year, that alone itself, the fact that we're even having an event like this, I think is something that's quite commendable and hope everyone's adjusting to the new normals of everything. Like, I, because we all went into lockdown at some point, but 
I've realized that I've actually got everyone covered in terms of lockdown. Like I started my year in 2020 in lockdown. Like on the 1st of January, I went into lockdown for a TV show called uh, uh, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. But when I went in, of course, they were going to change the name to Is He a Celebrity? Should He Even Be Here? Honestly, like literally one of the other celebs says, what, what is a Dilbrook? Is that something we're eating? And I was, you know, I was like, no, that's me. That's, that's my first name. And if you've never seen the show before, the way it works, folks, is that they obviously like, you know, they, they put you through all these challenges that are like really difficult and gross eating challenges and stuff like that. And and or I, of course, they, like they wanted you to get under their skin because they make you eat gross stuff like, you know, yeah, uh, weird animal products and things like that. But I was like, as someone who grew up in Colombo and, you know, has had many late nights at Pilaus, I knew that I was had up for all the other challenges. Like, you know, the acharu alone that my mom used to make, made it nice and easy for me. So I was having a good time. But what you might realize is that after a few weeks on that show, they start kicking people off, right, one by one. And you stay in because they vote for the people that they like. The Aussie public vote for the people they like. And even though I had a small profile, I knew that I was going to go all the way to the end because at least top three, because the Aussie public these days consists of so many immigrants. You know, look, I mean, look around us. You think people from Sri Lanka, India, and Pakistan are going to be voting for people like Rhonda Birchmore? No, of course not. They're going to vote for someone that looks like their cousin. So I knew that I was going to go all the way to the end. And then in the first week of elimination, I was kicked out straight away. Straight away. I didn't even last one round. I should have known better that our country members were too busy answering calls than making any calls. Like, that should have been my first indication. But then that's the other thing as well. Like, once they even got out of there, we already did our version of lockdown, right? And, and it's been such a weird adjustment for all of us. But for me in particular, when I had to do these shows in Adelaide, the, we had to go through these massive security checks because initially Melbourne went into like a snap lockdown you know, for, for, in February. So Adelaide said they don't want us there. Do you know what Adelaide's actually calling Victorians? They're calling us Victorians because all of a sudden Adelaide thinks they're better than us. <laughs> Unbelievable. So then. We went in there, and there was about me and another two other comedians, a guy called Dave Thornton and a comedian Tommy Little from the project, and the three of us were in Adelaide. And the way we had to do the shows is we had to be in the, in the, in the house for like by ourselves, and we can't see anyone else, but we can leave for the shows, and then have to come back immediately. And they were freaking out about all the security stuff, especially in the airport. Like the airport security took like 30 to 40 minutes. But unlike those fellows, for me, with my skin color, I was used to those airport security checks. I was glad that I got to keep my pants on this time, so I was fine with that. But even once we were in the hospital, in the house though we had uh, police come in and uh, check up on us to make sure that we're not we're not jumping you know the queue and things like that and the simple check was this policeman had an iPad with him right and on the iPad it was saying things like you know just the names that he had to check off and he's like oh, I just want to confirm that all three of you gentlemen are here so which one is Dave Thornton which one's Thomas Little I'm like ah you don't need to confirm who Dilruk Jai Singh is you just suddenly looked and confirmed it is it your your iPads come with a Dulux color palette is it that's why you're just matching all those shades with and for me, it's been really fun in a way with uh, trying to see how people react to the situation because obviously it's tough. Like, I live in Melbourne by myself. So I'm Melbourne based, but my whole family is back in Colombo. So, mom, dad, all of them are back there. So, every year I usually go see them three times a year. And then all of a sudden, this access to my parents has been taken away from me. So, as you can imagine, it's been quite challenging. But admittedly, the toughest part for me from 2020 was the fact that uh, Uber deliveries stopped coming into my building. So I had to go get my own food, which was difficult for me. As someone who hasn't cooked in two years, I was very annoyed by that. Because they obviously they said no more foreign people coming into the building. There was one particular day that I went out to go get my food. And I came in to the lift. And what happens next in the lift took like happened over maybe five seconds, but it, it, it sort of time slowed down because I get into the lift with my food and someone else, a neighbor of mine who I haven't met before, puts his hand through the lift, opens the door, looks at me, very confident, looks at me and says, sorry, mate, uh, Uber delivery guys need to stand outside the building. <laughs> <laughs> and in that moment, I was really grateful that I'd been meditating because I was very calm when I looked at him and I said, look, I actually live here. I'm a fellow resident. And in that moment, there was a look of guilt on his face. To be honest, it was far, that guilty look was far more delicious than any of the food I'd planned on eating. Like, I wanted to get some chips and dip in that guilt. It was like I'd never tasted single origin white guilt. It was like right there in front of me. It was beautiful. But then 
when the lift doors closed after he walked out, I saw my reflection. And in his defense, I was carrying a bag of McDonald's and KFC. So I kind of look like someone who's just delivering stuff out there. Now, I'm going to have to, unfortunately, wrap up and, and leave very, uh, very soon. But I, but I genuinely hope that everyone uh, here, uh, you've already done a lot to try and support this event. This is the fifth year, right, Binner? That's right, the fifth year. So hopefully, the more uh, of you support this, this thing become an annual event because Binner was just explaining to me what a wonderful, uh, what the wonderful work that they do, and I, and I tr truly believe they're doing some wonderful work, and I'm glad I can support it. You in particular, sir, you you are absolutely nailing it. Starting with the outfit, you've outshone me. That's the first thing. That's annoying, but. Never forget, fashion goes a long way, and you should be really proud of yourself. Could give yourself a round of applause. That's really well done. Thank you. And everybody else as well. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate your time, and uh, have a wonderful afternoon, and take care of yourselves, and hopefully I'll see you again next year. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dilruk. Thank you very much. Come on, give him a big round of applause.